It's a Thursday, February 17th, and the time for your body is to be morning news update. The business community is bracing for possible public sector layoffs and or increased taxation in the new financial year. This as government pursues ambitious fiscal targets imposed by the International Monetary Fund. And the president of the Barbados Private Sector Association, Tricia Tannis, is calling on government to protect the social fabric by ensuring that the working class is shielded from the brunt of the pending adjustments. Back in December, the IMF declared that government would once again be asked to reach a 6% fiscal surplus by the 2024-2025 financial year after relaxing its targets to provide the fiscal room to respond to the recent natural disasters and the COVID-19 pandemic. It is reasonable to expect that there is going to be some degree of hardship. I believe that there will be a very strong sense that the social network must be protected in that. Uh, I, I do endorse the call that we may need to look um, and, and further those discussions with the IMF, see whether or not you know there's opportunity to soften the expectation. I do agree, particularly there's going to be a negative impact on the social safety. Um, but having that aside, um, I think it is, it is not unreasonable to expect that there will be some um, some adjustment. You know, if there's revenue or revenue generation, then it speaks to tax. If there's cost cutting, unfortunately, labor tends to feel the brunt of, 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 of cost cutting. Uh, I'm hoping, though, that cost cutting, before we go and, and look at anything other than, you know, that anything anything that affects persons, because of course when you look at labor, then you're, then you're touching the safety, the social safety net, which you really can ill afford to touch at this time, even where our society. Uh, so you know, we're hoping that there's, there's innovations and, and, and looking at public sector reform and seeing where we can tighten um, without affecting labor. Tourism stakeholders are preparing to endure the first summer when no cruise ships will be visiting this island's shores. General Manager of Atlantis Submarines Barbados and Chairman of the Barbados Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. Rosen Myers acknowledged that the outlook for the period May to September is bleak, but she also believes that the decision on the Crop Over Festival, paired with a targeted marketing strategy, could swiftly improve the industry's fortunes. Our marketing team is similarly concerned. One, because even though it seems like not a significant number, we would normally have at least one weekly cruise ship calling and a cruise ship calling every other week in pre-COVID times. We now don't have any cruise ships. It's probably the first thing, certainly since I've been with Atlantis, that we don't have any summer ships calling at all. And that is cause for concern because even though you have a situation where it may only be one ship a week, it still is significant business for that one day because that ship sometimes can give us two or three tours um, and, and every other week the same. So we are concerned. Despite the challenges, Myers believes that there may be a silver lining beyond the cruise industry. She said while May and June are traditionally difficult, July and August are often much more promising. Our marketing team is similarly concerned. One, because even though it seems like not a significant number, we would normally have at least one weekly cruise ship calling and a cruise ship calling every other week in pre-COVID times. We now don't have any cruise ships. It's probably the first thing, certainly since I've been with Atlantis, that we don't have any summer ships calling at all. The European Union has donated 3.65 million euros, so that's equivalent to 8.3 million Barbados dollars, as budgetary support towards the government's planned social protection policy and strategy program. Thanking the EU for the support during a press conference on Wednesday, Minister of People Empowerment and Elder Affairs Cook Humphrey said the funds will, among other things, assist government in helping the poor vulnerable and marginalized. The, the importance of the support though is that it allows us to be able to do the things that we had imagined for ourselves and that we had imagined for the country and for the people who exist in this country. 
There are a number of things, as you would appreciate, as we try to define who we are in terms of our capacity to be able to help the persons who need help the most. We said, for example, and I made the announcement before, we wanted to amalgamate our social services. Um, we felt it was important to be able to reduce the duplication, to reduce the cost, to be better able to service the people who need servicing the most, to be able to bring those services closer to the people. The amalgamation of the social services is extremely important in our estimation to be able to do so, so that we are able to offer the best kind of, of programming going forward. That is why I also like the conversation we had before the media came, where we talked about sharing the best practice as well. I think the, the, the conversations that we also had spoke to not only receiving financial support, but building a policy dialogue and building out a partnership, a true partnership. The Pan American Health Organization has delivered 100 million doses of the COVID-19 vaccine to Latin America and the Caribbean so far. Word of this from PAHO Director Dr. Carissia Etienne. She made the revelation during the organization's weekly press conference on Wednesday. We have now delivered 100 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines to 33 countries in Latin America and the Caribbean, thanks to the work of PAHO's Revolving Fund in coordination with COVAX. We are also thankful for donations of vaccines from nine countries, which have made up to 30% of that 100 million dose milestone. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I'm a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To developments in our region, the United Nations Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohammed is in Haiti for an international event aimed at supporting the country's reconstruction and recovery efforts following the devastating earthquake in August last year. Over 2,000 people were killed in the earthquake and almost 13,000 were injured and many thousands more made homeless. Some 137,000 houses and other key infrastructure, including roads and bridges, were also affected. Mohammed reaffirmed the UN's commitment to support the country's recovery towards sustainable development, democracy, stability, and peace. This is not the time to give up. First, because the people of Haiti never give up. Time and time again, they mourn their losses, and then they pick themselves up and they put their lives back together. Second, because Haiti is again at a crossroad. Years of investment in stability and development must be protected, and national institutions are clearly ready to lead. But they need our solidarity, and we need Haiti to succeed. The Haitian people, especially the women and the youth, like people everywhere in our global community, deserve a stable, a peaceful and prosperous future. Today, we have another opportunity to get closer to that goal, an opportunity to show that we have learned from the mistakes of the past and that we know how to make smart and sustainable investments, that we can recognize national leadership when it is in motion and that we can invest in it. Today, we reaffirm our commitment to stand with Haiti and its people and to support the country's recovery towards sustainable development, democracy, stability and peace. And finally, police in Canada's capital are telling protesters to leave the area as the demonstration against COVID-19 restrictions continues. More from Reuters TV. 
leave or face arrest. That's the message on leaflets handed out by police in Ottawa on Wednesday to truckers and protesters blockading the city's downtown. And it looks like the first step in a promised crackdown to end a noisy but largely peaceful protest in the Canadian capital over the government's COVID-19 restrictions, now in its third week. At least one large rig did leave the blockade, but others remained unmoved. One demonstrator simply ripped it up. And a sign posted on a toilet in the protest area read, Attention police, place all tickets here. Police say some 33 people have already been arrested. Protester Andrew Bro said if it happens to him, so be it. I'm not afraid. If that's what uh, their captains and, and the police chief wants to uh, bring to this peaceful protest is violence, then that, that is on their own. We're here peacefully and we'll remain peacefully. Even if they attempt to arrest us, we will be arrested peacefully. Ottawa residents who say they've endured some incessant honking, locked streets, verbal harassment and litter have expressed frustration with police who, until now, have mostly watched the protest rather than intervening. This is not a peaceful protest. As pressure built, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau this week took a rare measure, invoking Canada's Emergencies Act, which, pending parliamentary approval, would empower his government to cut off protesters' funding and reinforce provincial and local law enforcement with federal officers. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.